I have has been a chaplain for over nine years in the Air Force. And, and during those, those nine years, it has contributed to me performing close to a couple hundred funerals. Memorial services, grave sites, ramp services. We're in the desert, and the, you've probably seen pictures of, a, of an airplane filled with coffins draped with flags. And uh, they always call the chaplain to do a service on the ramp before they head to Dover. And there are times when, you know, as a pastor, if you're going to do a funeral service or a memorial or whatever, the main question you want to know to help you prepare is, was this person saved? Because if this person was saved, there's a whole lot we can talk about. There's a whole lot we can base our hope on. If this person was not saved, we have to go a different direction in offering words of comfort. I, I remember being in the hospital, and this guy was hooked up to all these machines, and he was seconds away from crossing over, and his daughter was right by his side and crying profusely, crying, no, no, no. And she made a few statements of faith about Jesus. And as a pastor and as a chaplain, when you're in those moments, you're, you're, you're trying to hear for any, any kind of clue to help you navigate your input. And when I heard her talk about Jesus, I latched on to that. And I said, he's going to be all right. And she said, no, no, you don't understand. He doesn't know Jesus. And I remember physically stepping back, speechless. As if I had nothing else to say. I can't comfort you other than being here to maybe rub your back. But in those other situations, whether it be someone who was young or someone who was older, if they had professed Jesus Christ, we latch on to that, and there are tons of scriptures we can pull from to talk about heaven. But it hit me, and I believe the Holy Spirit is what initiated this dialogue in my head one day, and he said, why is it that you wait until now to talk about heaven? It's almost like when somebody dies who is saved, the pastor goes, oh, wait, 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 remember. They're going to heaven. Don't forget. We don't mourn as those who have no hope. Our, our hope is in Christ. It's like, remember? Remember heaven? And that's where it just really became clear to me the contrast of how many of us live today versus how those in, this new, in the early church live their lives every single day. It seems that heaven is on the back burner, that we're comfortable having our Jesus card in our wallet or purse in case we're asked for it one day. But other than that, we really don't think about it. Other than that, it really doesn't drive the decisions that we make. Other than that, it doesn't shape our motive for mission. That's why we got to try to convince everybody to do it. What about heaven? Remember that? Remember heaven? When is the last time you talked to somebody about heaven? 
When is the last time you described what heaven looked like to somebody else? When is the last? Have you talked to anybody about heaven this year? If not, what do we want them to be thirsty for? You remember when Peter, 1 Peter 3.15, he said, he said, you know what? There's a lot going on. I know times are tough and times are rough, and I just want to encourage you all to, to, to move through it. But I want to throw this little nugget out there that, that each of us ought to be ready to give an answer for why our hope is in Jesus Christ. We ought to be ready to give an answer for why our hope is in Jesus. Now, the implication is somebody is going to ask you about why your hope is in, not your faith, not the I believe in Jesus. No, why your hope is in, hope is about looking towards the future. He's saying, because he knows that people, he's living this way, and the people he's talking to are living this way, they're living with a visible hope. They're living like people, that their, their decisions are based on the life that is to come, and it's so visible, he says, people are going to ask you about why you're looking for the world to come, and you need to be ready to give an answer for that. Has anybody asked you about why your hope is in Christ? Have you lived like you have it? Or have we been as worried about worldly things as they have? Uh, the world, I mean the whole world is anxious about this election. And so is the church. The whole world is anxious about COVID. And so is the church. At no point have I seen on my Facebook feed if I catch COVID and die, glory be to God. And, and, and across the, the, the country, when we are trying to preach and teach to the church, and, and, and times are hard, and times are tough, you see across the country, the encouragement, hey, it's going to be all right one day. Don't, don't worry about it. There's a brighter day ahead. And we're not talking about heaven. We're just talking about the storm is going to be over soon. Like Whatever you're going through right now, it's going to pass. It's going to be all right. You don't ever hear the New Testament leaders talking like that. They say things like, endure hardness, because one day it's going to be over, and glory is awaiting us. None of them talk about hoping and praying that, 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 uh, uh, that, that Nero changes his mind. <laughs> hoping and praying that the worldly circumstances become more comfortable and convenient. They don't say anything like that. They say, hold on until you see Jesus. It's going to be all, no matter what you're going, it's going to be all right because this life is not all for us. That's living with hope. I, I believe in physical healing. I've seen it. I've experienced all of that kind of stuff. But, 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 but if it doesn't happen, Paul said, if I live, I live for God. If I die, I die for whether I live or, or, or die, it's to the Lord. He's like, I really want to be gone. I'm only here because y'all still need me. But I'd rather be there. But apparently he still wants to be here because y'all are hard-headed and you don't listen. If y'all would just get this thing, I could go home. Paul lived. His, his whole focus was there. He had no desire in making this world more comfortable and cushy for us. He had no desire. As a matter of fact, he said, guys, listen, the, the, the momentary light afflictions that we are experiencing here can, can, can compare to the glory that's going to be revealed. Keep your focus on eternity and stop trying to make pillows around here. It's not supposed to be comfortable for us. It's not supposed to be easy. We're going somewhere else and we're living our life because we want everyone else to go with us. That's our goal. That's our, don't forget about heaven. Don't forget about heaven. The greatest temptation the devil has for Christians is to get your eyes off of heaven. Because then you'll live trying to get all you can from this world. And you'll have this big question mark on your forehead. What's my purpose? 
What's my purpose? See, folks who are focused on eternity never ask that question. When 60 million people buy a purpose-driven life, I mean, 60 million people didn't know it. Didn't know their purpose. Why? You're not focused on eternity. Our very identity as children of God is valuable for two reasons and two reasons only. If one of these reasons changed, it wouldn't be worth being called a child of God. The first reason is who we belong to. We're a child of God. It's whose we are. And God is eternal. So the second reason is that we're his forever. One, we're his. Two, forever. 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 You will outlive earth. Because of what was done in you because of Jesus, you will outlive earth. Does that change how you think about your bills? Does, does that change how you think about who is president or who is not? He didn't come so we could make this whole place better. Sorry. He didn't. He said to pray, thy will be done, thy, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And those of us who are citizens of another world, yes, it is our not just responsibility, but our privilege to bring heaven to earth. But don't be so focused on trying to bring heaven to earth that you forget that after earth you're going to heaven. We're going to heaven, y'all. That's all they talked about. When you think about their faith, you think about why Paul can get beat up and stoned and left for dead and shipwrecked and whipped all these times. And he still keeps on going like the Energizer buddy. But Paul, why don't you just quit? No. <laughs> I didn't do this so I can be popular. I, I'm, I'm not striving so that they'll like me. I've got heaven in mind. And as I think about who I used to be and how I've been changed by Jesus, I have nothing else to do with my life but to communicate the, the gospel of God's grace to everybody. That's the only reason why I am living, to let everybody know that because I've got in, you can get into. To let everybody know that their sins can be forgiven. To let everybody know that eternity is real. And the only way there is Jesus. That's what I'm committing my entire life to. So yes, I might get stoned. I might get beat up. But I'm still got this message on the inside of me. Because I'm focused on eternity. When you're focused on eternity, that's why you don't quit. That's why. When you're focused on eternity, that's why you're missional. If you try to get people not focused on eternity to be missional, for what? For personal validation? Then they do mission for self-service and you wonder why? Because they're not focused on eternity. They got a different, they're focused on something else. When you focus on eternity, that's why you, you keep going as much as you can, Bob. <laughs> Man, when we're focused on eternity, we're not worried about being embarrassed. When we're focused on eternity, we're not worried about being rejected. Well, what if they don't like me? What if I can't remember all the scriptures? What if they ask me questions I can't answer? What if God moves? What if God moves in the grocery store? What if he moves? Your name? What if God moves? He's never required perfection from us. He's only required faith. And he says, I'll take it from there. What if God moves? When you're not focused on eternity, you can't help but be focused on yourself. That's your default setting. 
Anytime you mute the Holy Spirit and his unction for you to say, to go, to move, to do, anytime you, it's because you have, you have put yourself above eternity. Every time. Well, what about me? No. It's what about them? It's what about them? Um, so that's my introduction. <laughs> this is this is kind of my point. <laughs> when when I look at the lives of Jesus, the apostles, many in the early church, I say, man. I want to be like that. I want to live like that. I want to sacrifice like that. And we, we can look at their lives and then just try to imitate the behavior. It seems noble. And you cannot do it. You cannot imitate their faith without imitating their focus. You cannot do it. And oftentimes, because we cannot do that, we just settle for something else. Do you know that the focus on eternity, that's not the, the platinum membership of Christianity. That's not the luxury version. That's not for those who are just radical. There's only one, one way to follow Jesus, and that's radical. Uh, he, he really made it clear. There's only one way to follow Jesus, and that's radical. That, that's, that's the focus on eternity. Jesus in his own teachings, as I dive into the word, I just began to see it just popped up, and I thought, man, like how, is this, how is this such an overwhelming theme in the New Testament, but not so much today? If you con I'm going to read some passages, and then I want you to contrast it with what is the predominant message of American Christianity. And I'm specifically talking about American Christianity, because there's some other countries that got it, they got it different. For, 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 for good reasons. Are you sure we want to get baptized? Because you can get your head cut off today if you get baptized. Right? And then when they go, yes, I still want to get baptized. See, that's a different kind of faith. All right, that's a different kind of faith. That's not like we want to get you baptized and we got these classes we want you to. No, no. Like, you realize when you come out of this water, you could die. When you say yes to that, how can you say yes to that? Focus on eternity. If I die, it's all good. To live is Christ, to die is gain. Y'all, that's not just cute poetry. That's a reality he was living. They all live this. Look, look at, uh, in 2 Corinthians, um, I, I have verse 18 that I, that I sent in, but I want to read verse 17 first. So 17 is not on the screen. I want to read 17 and then go into verse 18. Here Paul says this, For our momentary light afflictions is producing for us an absolutely incomparable eternal weight of glory. Now verse 18. So... We fix our eyes on what is, we, uh, we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Because of the value of what comes next, because of the reality and the truth of what comes next, Though it is invisible, that's where we fix our eyes. It's interesting, he says, we're fixing our eyes on what we can't see. That means you've got to look with something else. It's the eyes of our hearts, the eyes of our faith. You cannot visibly see it, but it's what's most important. You cannot visibly see it, but it's what should drive you. You cannot visibly see it, but it's what should comfort you. You cannot visibly see it. You got to see it with something else. We fix our eyes on things that are eternal. 
And so we see, we see this. I'm going to run through these, these scriptures because I'm going to, I want to intentionally, temporarily overwhelm you. I don't want you to try to memorize. I'm going to go through them fast. I don't want you to try to memorize. What I want you to do is, is be aware of what your spirit is feeling. I want you to experience what's about to happen. I'm going to go too fast for notes, too fast for your memory. Be in this moment. Jesus talked about it in Matthew 6, verse 19 through 20. Our, our, our focus, don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your, your treasures in heaven. And then, right, Live for that. Where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. He says the same thing in Luke 12, 34. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. Pay attention to how the world is trying to get you to desire everything here. That's the greatest temptation facing Christians today. The desire for things that are here. Don't you want to have what's here? Don't you want to have? There are seven ways to get this. Eight ways to get this. Think about all the real estate you can have, all your 401ks, all the think of all here, 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 here. Here, 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 here. This is how you get this. This is how you get this. This is how you amass wealth. This is how you do this. This is how you do it. Don't store up for yourselves. <laughs> see, the reason why I put it on scripture up here so you can see it, in case it's not in your version. You can see I'm not making this stuff up. The guy you said you want to follow. I know it ain't popular, but that ain't why I'm here. The guy you said you want to follow, he said, don't focus on this. Some of y'all are breaking the bank trying to make this happen for you. This is not the American dream. And you will not marry the American dream and the kingdom of God. You will not do it. And the blessing of God, the favor of God, the hand of God is not on your life for the American dream. It is on your life to advance the kingdom. And you seek first the kingdom, then everything will be added unto you. I'm not saying it's, it's, it's bad to, to have a lot of money or it's bad to have... I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is I'm talking about your focus. If you have those things and when stuff gets shaky and it has just ruined your day, it's because your, your trust in that thing is off. It's not about just what you have. It's about where your trust is. It's about where your trust is. Paul says this to Romans. Romans 8, verse 16 and 18. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, no, no she's talking about identity, right? She's talking about identity. And if children, then heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, if we indeed suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. For I consider the sufferings of this present time, his perspective, not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. You see, that is his perspective. No matter what Paul goes through, he compares it to what's next, and it can't compare. And he says, I'm going to be all right. You don't see Paul complaining. Because he's, he's focused on eternity. Why is he worshiping in a jail? He's focused on eternity. He just got beat, and all the thing he wants to do is wants to worship God. And then, and then we and we take a story like that, we twist it around, right? If you want to get your breakthrough, you got to worship when you're going through. Just like Paul and Silas, they worship God in the midst of a situation, and God created an earthquake and broke him out of jail. So your worship is the key to your breakthrough. Shut up! No, it ain't. No, it ain't. He didn't worship to get out. He was worshiping because he didn't know how long he's going to be there. And God was good regardless. God's good outside the chains. And God's good when you got chains on. God's good outside the dungeon. And God's good inside the dungeon. And that's why God said, you know what? 
as much as I love worship from the dungeon, we got to break this brother up out of here. He didn't worship to get out. He worshiped because God was good. You see how, but we, we flip it to make it more self-serving. We take so many stories in scripture and we flip it to make it self-serving and we miss the power of the story. That God can make steel chains fall off. That God can turn a situation around and bring about a jailer's salvation through the chains. The story here is about the focus they had in spite of the situation. Paul was living the very same thing he's talking to everybody else about. These light afflictions can't compare. Silas, I got a song in my spirit. You want to join in? You want to join in? It's pitch black. It smells like feces. Rats crawling all over. There's no windows or visitation time. Then you certainly don't have HBO and can't get a law degree while you're still in jail. No, they're in the dungeon. They're in the dungeon. Just got whipped. Bruises open. Bleeding. Blood pouring down. Their eyes. Silas. I got a song. Because this doesn't change anything. Focus on eternity. Hebrews 12, 1, 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. Let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. Notice the key word is endurance, right? Make it to the end. We do this. How we do this, Hebrew writer, how we do it? We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith because the joy awaiting him he endured the cross do you see that because of his focus while he's on the cross bleeding his back is open leaning against the splintering surface of the old rugged cross and his blood his lungs are filling with blood he's being mocked by those who place him there but his focus is on the joy what my focus will be on these thorns I can't believe after all the good I've done, y'all done spat on me, put a thorn like this is just a hot mess. No. Focus is the joy. James 1.12. Blessed is the one who perseveres in a trial, having stood the test. You see that? Hard time. That person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. First, that, that's James, right? That's James. First Peter 5, 4. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. That, 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 that's Peter. Now we talk about, talk about Paul. First Corinthians 9, 25. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Philippians 3, 14. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. 2 Timothy 4, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. There is reserved for me in the future the crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge will give me on that day and not just to me only but to all those who love his appearing. There's a crown, y'all. There's a crown. Jesus talked about the crown, James the crown, Peter the crown, Paul the crown. Don't forget about heaven. Don't forget about heaven. The place that has 12 gates, 12 foundations, pearls, amethysts, different stones make up the layers. A rainbow arching over the throne and the angels singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Worthy, worthy is the one who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb be all glory and honor and majesty, dominion and power. And there are the 24 elders casting down their crowns at his feet. And John said there's a number that no one can number. When they all look different, they must have been from everywhere. I see so many different kinds of outfits. So many different colors. 
There were even palm branches. Hosanna. Holy. There are streets of gold. That's where we're going. For now we see through a glass dimly. But then. Then. Face to face. When we see him. We will be like him. Don't you dare forget about heaven. That's why Jesus came. He didn't came, come so your life on earth can be awesome. He didn't. He came so that when this was over, you have a better place to go. Eternity lives with you. Focus on eternity. Don't forget about heaven. Read through the scriptures. Read what they say. Look at how they encouraged the early church, the apostles. Guys, I know it's tough. Hang on. Hang on. In case you're wondering, let me just give you a little detail. That when the trumpet sounds, those who are asleep, they're going to go first. If we're still alive, then those of us who remain, we're going to be caught up to meet them. Just want you to have a visual for when times get rough. Hold on. There's another life, another world, another kingdom that we already belong to. That's what we're living for. That's why he came. That's why we're in. Focus on eternity. And don't forget about heaven. Let it come from the back burner to the front burner. Let it be what you think about, what you talk about, what you share. Focus on heaven. That will change your entire life. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's, uh, let's, there we go. let's stand together. Let's stand together. Man, Dr. John, bringing it. I've never heard a shut up in service feel so holy, so right. Father, we just thank you for this morning. Thank you for these words. Lord, we thank you for those that right now are contemplating eternity. Wanting to know where their eternity rests. And Jesus, you said, this is eternal life that you would know me. So Father, we just pray right now, eyes closed around the room, those that have felt far away from the Lord. Those that have had that question of what is this life afterwards? He's saying, you know, I want to make a, a commitment to Jesus either for the first time or recommit your life again. Raise your hand. Look at me right now. Father, we declare in Jesus' name, there be no fear, no worry. I see you, friends. Those online, no fear, no worry. In this moment, this confession of faith, they say, I stand committed to Jesus. So I invite our prayer team up right now as we're about to pray for this. And those online, those here in the room, I want us all to join together with this prayer. Say, in the name of Jesus. Come on, church, in the name of Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Jesus, I thank you that you died on the cross for my sins, for my sickness, and my salvation. Holy Spirit, enter my heart. Jesus, I plead your blood over all sin. I receive your cleansing power. And today, I make a commitment to follow you with all of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give a shout to Jesus for that. If you either made a commitment here in person or online, we just uh, want to talk to you. There's also, for those online, a I said yes form you can fill out. You can also email I said yes at rockrosal.com. We want to pray with you and partner with you. We know a confession of faith towards Jesus is where it begins, not ends. And so we really want to be a part of your discipleship journey. So please come and talk to us. Uh, also, there's a couple of words my friend Brandon wanted to share real quick, uh, just for those in need, those watching online right before we close. Uh, when I walked in and we started worshiping, I uh, heard the verse, come to me all who are weary and you will find rest. Um, <clears throat> there's been some people that have had some loss um, every time around this time of year. Uh, you can feel that loss, you know, when you've lost somebody. Um, and not just, uh, not just death, but relationship. 
Um, so I feel that's uh, for a few of you. Um, so uh, if that's for you, I actually want to just pray for you real quick specifically. Can you raise your hand if you're just um, dealing with a little bit of loss? Right there, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Lord, we just, we just thank you for every person in this room that has experienced uh, a loss in their family, a loss in relationship, that you, the great comforter, would come. Lord, would you come right now? Would they feel your presence like, like a warm hug uh, that only you can give, Lord? So we just bless them. Would you bring just peace in the chaos in their mind? of what could have happened differently, what they could have done differently, the what ifs, Lord. We just thank you for filling every gap and just healing them, healing their emotions in Jesus' name. I heard, a, um, at first I heard a brain contusion, but it was like a, a head contusion, um, you know, like you got hit in your head. Is there anybody recently that has had some kind of car accident? I feel like it was a car accident of some sort. It might be you or a family member <clears throat> that uh, that hit their head in a um, in a car accident it might be for someone online. It was very specific. Um, so if if that's you and you didn't want to raise your hand or whatever, or you think afterwards, come up to me, okay? Um, and then uh, uh, lastly, when Brandon was speaking at the beginning of the service, and he was talking about uh, ooh, he was talking about the person that had an encounter uh, with the Lord. Uh, you know, the, the youth that didn't believe in God. And then uh, he said, Lord, if you're real, heal my shoulder. And he healed his shoulder. Um, and you heard that and you said, like literally to yourself, not out loud, you said, you said, I want that. Like, I want that encounter. Like, I've never had that encounter. If, that, if that's you, I just want to bless you. So just raise your hand if you said that and you haven't experienced, or maybe it's been a while since you've experienced that with the Lord, uh, or maybe you've uh, been prayed for several times and haven't been healed. Whatever the case is, um, I just want to bless you specifically. Thank you. I see that hand. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So, Lord, uh, we just lift all of these people up to you. We are looking to you, Lord. We are looking to eternity. We are looking to what you have in store for us. We thank you for that. We thank you for the lives of all of these people that are just seeking you, Lord. And just like the woman touched Jesus's garment, Lord, may they just touch you right now. May they, may they touch heaven. May they be healed. May they be set free. <laughs> May you encounter them in their dreams. May you encounter them um, right when they get out of bed and put their feet on the floor, Lord. Would you speak to them specifically? Would you bless every single one of them? I just thank you. I just thank you that we can come here and we can celebrate with you, Lord. So we just claim every single body here for you to be healed in Jesus' name. Mm, amen. So, Father, we seal these. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you'd move in a significant way. Those watching online right now, heal their bodies as well. We speak to the spirit of anxiousness and say, go in Jesus' name. Be rest and peace. Holy Spirit, guide us this week as we enter the last month of 2020. We celebrate <laughs> the, the coming to an end, but also whatever you have in store. God, do your work. Have your way in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Thank you so much, church. If you need prayer, please come forward. Our team will be here. But if not, have an amazing day. Uh, thank you again. We'll see you next Sunday.